introduction inga de kato so go ai tongo ro wa ni chenda alright You can take your time. And I'm ready to go to the other Pastor Timothy TJM Chigovare. I am uh, the founder and president of People's Progressive Party, which political party was launched on the 26th of December 2008. And uh, what brings us here today is the issue of the launch of our manifesto and also to discuss the way forward as far as the 2023 election is concerned and how we can make it a successful election that will be recognized all over, all over the world as a credible election. So this is why we are here today. But first and foremost, we would like to acknowledge our God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. This is a day that you have made. For us all to be here today, it is by your grace. We surrender this day and what we are to do right now in your precious hands. May the Holy Spirit take charge. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. What brings us here today is the issue of our manifesto, which is being considered as the best manifesto according to those who have read it to be the best manifesto in Africa because a big number of uh, your colleagues who have gone through it have already testified that we have the best manifesto in Africa. And uh, they are also saying if such a manifesto is implemented, it will change the lives of every citizen and all their expectations will be guaranteed. There are a lot of things that are contained. I don't know if all of you have been shared the manifesto. Right, I thought it has been shared because I had already asked uh, the, the hosting uh, uh, office to share the manifesto to all of you. We will start with uh, the informal sector uh, the private sector, the civil servants, and teachers, journalists, nurses, doctors, uh, mining industry, manufacturing industry, agricultural industry, construction industry, and all the other industries, including the tourism industry. There will be what we call government guarantees for private sector which also includes the, private, the, the civil servants, whereby they will be... I, must, uh, I don't know whether I should start a point. Yeah, whereby they will be able to purchase houses and purchase motor vehicles without uh, some... because there are terms and conditions that apply. Which facilities are not available in the country and uh, there will be a lot in fact which will also be able to find 
which you'll also be able to find on the, on the manifesto, which is going to be shared to all of you uh, by the time we finish. And uh, the, this is uh, a new path that starts today with the PPP government when we take over. Every civil servant and uh, every, um, everyone who's working in the private sector, I can say their expectations will be guaranteed. There's a lot that is going to happen. It has taken a long time for us to construct this uh, uh, manifesto. It also covers the, uh, the police, the army. And we are saying the PPP government, the PPP government, uh, PP, PPPZ new government will train, discipline, dignify, accommodate and feed and provide for the police and the army. Everyone knows that the police are starving, the army, some they are eating beans, and uh, uniforms are a problem, they've run out of motor vehicles, same applies to police stations. And we are saying if we are in power, there is a lot that we are going to do. We will, the first thing that we will do is we will direct, we start with the army, we will direct the army to protect the country from foreign threats, not to be used by politicians to harm or persecute citizens. And with the police, we will direct the police to save and to protect the citizens from criminals and not to be used by politicians to harm and persecute citizens and to ensure that the police investigate and arrest corrupt leaders and those who violate human rights. And the, we will provide for them, we will make sure they have food, we will make sure that they have motor vehicles, we will make sure that they have uh, uh, accommodation and they have typewriters, they have computers. So many police stations at the moment as we speak, you find that they don't have computers, they don't have laptops. Why? Because the, the state, or I can say the ruling party, which others are describing as a ruining party, they, don't, they failed to maintain all the institutions which are meant to, to save the people. So we wouldn't like to see police, I, I think you'll see it on our manifesto, which is going to be shared to all of you very soon. We don't want to see police going on top of taxes like this. We don't want to see police eating in public, eating like the way they are eating, some they are eating in ports. We want a dignified police force, a disciplined police force. And we want to see this happening also with the army. In other countries, we, we, we see standards. Like, for example, in this country, we had standards. Our police force was recognized as the best police force all over the world. So we're going to change all that. And this will also apply to our youth. We have millions of our youth who have turned into, we have been turned into street vendors. And some are selling airtime when they are graduates. And this has to stop. We, I can say this nonsense has to stop because the country of Zimbabwe has everything. And uh, it's not a country where we will find citizens or our youth having nothing to do. We have to ensure that we do something to get these to work, these youth to work. We create employment for them so that we turn them into ma to masters of their des own destiny. And this will apply also to, to journalists, yourselves. We have a lot in store for you. You will be able to see it on our manifesto. And uh, there's a lot for you to benefit. And uh, we have seen a lot. And uh, I can say as I go on my, as I'm on my journey to the throne, I will, I will be, I will take the, the, the media houses along and the youth along and we will do a lot to ensure that they, we change their lives because some of you right now, you have, you're using private transport. You're supposed to be using your own motor vehicles. You're supposed to be having facilities in financial institutions whereby you walk in, you make an application, 
you able to walk out with a motor vehicle which you pay monthly installments you are supposed to be having medical aid which you pay a small amount you're supposed to have a house which you pay a small amount on a month an affordable amount because you are citizens there's no way you can run away with a, a loan if you are issued if you are given a loan to buy a house to buy a motor vehicle or even for further education so these facilities are scarcity to our people it is time for us to, to do something, to stand firm and say no to all what is happening. We need to change the lives of our people. And this also applies to our hospitals. Our hospitals, uh, they are in shambles. And uh, we have put a lot in this manifesto, whereby we will say patients must have rights. Every patient has the right to a healthy and safe environment. Every patient must, must have a right to participate in decision making. Access to healthy care, receiving timely emergency care, treatment and rehabilitation, all this is in our manifesto. Provision for special needs, counseling, um, positive dis uh, disposition and, and a lot of other things like health information, knowledge of one's healthy insurance and medical scheme, choice of healthy services. Every patient has, uh, must be treated by, by, a name, by a named healthy care provider. All these are in our manifesto, which we are going to share with you. Every patient or client has the, the following responsibilities to take care of his or her health, to care for and to protect the environment, to respect and to respect the rights of other patients and the healthy care providers, to utilize the healthy care system properly and not to abuse it, to know his or her local healthy services and what they offer to provide health care, um, health care uh, providers with the relevant and accurate information for diagnostic treatment, rehabilitation, and counseling purposes, to advise the health care providers on his or, her, or his or her wishes with regard to his or her death. All this information is supposed to be the patients must have the right to, the, it must be known to them, but our healthy system is in shambles. Then we have security and comfort for all. For the first time in the history of Zimbabwe, define a, big, a bigger basket for social security benefits and make these easier to access while addressing the exclusion of orphans, children, children, people with disability, and the aged in rural areas and on farms. For the first time in the history of Zimbabwe, the PPPZ family will introduce UIF. You know, in, in Zimbabwe at the moment, we don't have pension. Uh, there are people who have been working for 30 years. I was talking to somebody at, uh, in Bulawayo just this last weekend, and he's telling me he has been working for the municipality for 30 years. But when he is leaving, any time from now, he has nothing to take with him because there's no such money. So these are some of the issues we are concerned about. And we also have land and, uh, land and food security. The PPPZ new government will, will address the title deeds backlog in all municipalities and release state land for people of all communities to build homes and grow, uh, and grow produce. PPPZ will, is gearing itself to invest billions in commercial farming for export and for the local market and is particularly excited about the huge potential uh, for the greenhouse farming uh, for export. The PPPZ government will, pre will develop projects that will bring together 
areas of economic development, housing and technologies and transport. And there's a very interesting issue which I have to bring up to attention, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this issue, it has been on our manifesto and uh, we were just informed just a few minutes ago that uh, the government has uh, they had to, to, to change its decision on taxes. We had provided, uh, we had put this on our, on our manifesto and we were saying the taxi industry of Zimbabwe to be sponsored or to be um, empowered by the uh, the Iveco, uh, it's a new model, and the, Mas the Mercedes, also it's a new mo mo model, which is also in, uh, it's like a bus. And uh, we are saying the PPPZ government will work very closely with the Zimbabwe taxi industry and the investors to, to revitalize and build the industry, providing safe, clean, and reliable services to the to the customers or the, or the passengers. An opportunity for all taxi owners and, a new, in, in, uh, and, and um, new entrants into the industry to purchase and own new 35-seater buses and trailers and to, in, to receive training for drivers and conductors. And by now in the trainer public fueling the uh, a growing economy taxi industries I mean the taxi industry itself particularly the dry, the taxi drivers and conductors will be entitled to the PPPZ government's guarantees when purchasing an RDP house or a motor vehicle, as, 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 as per the samples that you see here, you'll be able to see them on our, on our manifesto. Watch a concept of Tenga Motor, Zavanoda, as much as it was Nigga Dream Motor, the Singapore, a certain amount because there are terms and conditions which apply. Then we proceed to community safety and security. With the assist assistance of developed nations, the PPPZ family will prioritize the rollout of water uh, infrastructure throughout Zimbabwe <clears throat> to, pro to provide clean water and uh, fast track and un un unblock uh, key projects. At the moment, as we speak, we are all aware that every stream, whether in Harare, whether in Bulawayo, they are smelling urine, I mean uh, sewage. So we want, we want to see something like that happening. We are going to stop that nonsense so that we have the right people to do the job. People must be employed on merit so that no stream will be smelling uh, sewage and uh, water will be easily accessible. People have got problems everywhere. And uh, we are hearing that there are boreholes that are being put in uh, certain places and you find the community has more than uh, 10,000 people and then there's one or two boreholes and that's not enough for our people. So we would like to see water being accessible to our people. And the PPPZ president will ensure a, a better, a, uh, will ensure police are better trained to investigate cases, to improve and coordinate uh, and, and coordination between investigators and uh, prosecutors. The PPPZ president will ensure police visibility and in communities by, in, by increasing the number of men and women in uniform to protect all communities, black, white, colored, and Indian, because Zimbabwe belongs to all, belongs to Zimbabweans of yesterday, tomorrow, and belongs to Zimbabweans of yesterday and of tomorrow. Uh, the PPPZ president will, imp will implement a national plan of action to address the causes of gender-based violence, uh, better equipment, uh, better equip and, and, uh, and better equip police and courts to 
uh, to support survivors of gender-based violence call for stricter bail conditions in cases, uh, in, in cases of domestic violence and sexual abuse or sexual offenses, speed up educational programs and psychological and social support for learners and young children. We will strengthen policing to read uh, our communities on all forms of crime, gangs and drugs, and will implement a national plan of action to end gender-based violence. We have a skills revolution, transfer responsibility for early childhood development, which is the ECD, to, to, edu to the education, uh, to the Ministry of Education, and make um, the Z years of uh, ECD compulsory for ch of all for all children. Amend the curriculum, uh, which is the CV or curriculum, and uh, prepare uh, learners for the fourth industrial revolution. The PPPZ president will ensure that school buildings throughout Zimbabwe are upgraded and replace unsafe school toilets because a big number of schools, they've got uh, uh, latrines, pit toilets, and those are old fashions and we cannot allow that to, to continue. capable, dependable, and honest government. The PPPZ will take firm action against corruption and state capture, conduct lifestyle audits on, of public officials, and prevent uh, public servants from doing uh, business with the state, make tenders more transparent, efficient, and credible. Safeguard the independence of the judiciary because a weakened judiciary translates into a weakened democracy. Strengthen the oversight role of parliament and provincial legislatures, legislatures. return and strengthen the, uh, the Zimbabwe Republic Police and CID. Support local councils to improve financial management and service delivery, strengthen relations with the institutions of traditional leadership and work closely with uh, the chiefs, providing relevant uh, budgets and salaries. Nation, uh, a nation united in diversity, the PPPZ government will work to unite all Zimbabweans and build a country in which all be belong and few at home. No political party or a political personality owns Zimbabwe. We collectively keep this country in trust for future generations. I have always been saying, even on some of the uh, posters which we had in Bulawayo, we have indicated that no one holds the title deeds of this country and no politician on this country, no political party on the people of Zimbabwe. The people of Zimbabwe are God's people. So no politician can impose to say the people must do things my way. Everything must be done by dialogue with the people because they are the ones who make things happen. And uh, it's very important for every political leader to know that uh, citizens or members of the, ch of the political party members are like church members who can live at their own will and they are not supposed to be intimidated to say if you leave this party you will do this, if you do this you will do this. These are some of the things that we will try by all means to prevent, to ensure that we have a new culture, not a culture of violence, a culture of uh, making life difficult uh, 
life of citizens difficult and making them to live as if they are prisoners in their own country. These are some of the things we need to deal with. <coughs> Our mission is to, to unite the beautiful people of this country so that we can be one nation and one people. We have reached a stage where the chiefs of this country, the chiefs of Zimbabwe must be honored. And uh, the chiefs were not elected. The chiefs were put on the positions where they are by God. And it would be unfair for any government to underestimate chiefs because chiefs, they are not there because they were elected by the people, not at all. So we have reached a stage where we have to change a number of things as far as the lives of our chiefs are concerned. And uh, it's also included on the manifesto which I'm going to share with you. And uh, for the sake of progress, I'm just ignoring certain pages because I'm going to share with you this manifesto. And uh, we talk in terms of compensation and the restoration of commercial farmers who, who lost their farms during the late uh, Robert, Robert Mugabe's reign of terror. So we believe as People's Progressive Party that these commercial farmers were Zimbabweans. And the land where they were is Zimbabwe. And uh, we feel the decision was very harsh because it disadvantaged not the white community, but it disadvantaged our people. Because those who were given that land, they did not have experience, they didn't have passion. And uh, I feel that uh, the, this was supposed to be done in a professional manner, that those who were owning that land were supposed to be workers for the people, because they are Zimbabweans. And then they train our young people they train our youth to know how to manage the land, how to make the land productive, than just to bulldoze and move them out of that land, and then the land becomes unproductive. We strongly believe, as People's Progressive Party, that these, those who lost their land would need to be compensated. If they are still fit to work on that land, they still be, I strongly believe that they, they must be allocated land, which is equivalent to the land that was taken from them, so that that land becomes productive. Because, one, they were exporting and bringing in the desperately needed foreign currency, and two, they were feeding the nation. And three, they were making, they were creating a lot of employment. We're talking of many people who were employed and those people lost their jobs. And four, they were con connected to the international business community. And because of that reason that they have been forced out of the, their land or out of the, la out of the land that they were uh, using for construction, I mean, for, uh, for agriculture and uh, producing uh, uh, food for the nation and exporting. What has happened is uh, these people, uh, they uh, to leave the country with the wisdom that was supposed to be shared to millions of our people. So I strongly believe that these people, they deserve to be given another chance because they are Zimbabweans and they were born here, and the land is Zimbabwe, and there's nowhere they would have gone away with that land. So this is why I am saying it's, it's important for uh, the new government of the PPP, government, the PPP to take, take into consideration of that and uh, restore these commercial farmers and give them land that is equivalent to the land that they have lost by agreement with the government to make sure that that land becomes productive so that we create millions of jobs 
so that we start manufacturing, start uh, exporting. And uh, we're looking at big companies such as Olivin, such as Lever Brothers, National Foods. These companies were, cre were creating millions of jobs or thousands of jobs. We look at uh, CSC, the Cold Storage Commission. Uh, there's one in Marondera is closed, there's one in Bulawayo, there's one in Iguero. They are no longer productive. So it was too harsh for the government to take that, uh, to make such a decision. But with uh, the PPPZ government, we will ensure that the commercial farming community is given uh, priority and uh, we ensure that uh, they produce for export. They produce to feed not only uh, our people but to feed other nations so that they bring the desperately needed uh, foreign currency and uh, we will be able to take care of our hospitals which hospitals are today in shambles and we will be able to take care of the workers there at hospitals as we speak right now Nurses have no salary. We were talking to some nurses who were saying they were last paid in December. And uh, the unfortunate part is that I was talking to a nurse who is a lady who was saying, look, say me, I am a lady. There are also things that I need on a daily basis. How do I survive? I've got a kid. I've got kids to look after. So the, it's a total breakdown. So the, the PPP government would need to produce... Uh, a lot from the commercial farming community and create millions of jobs. Uh, the first plan of action, if I am elected to be president of Zimbabwe, I will immediately change the lives of our selfless, loving, brave, and hardworking, and caring nurses and doctors, and ensure that they, they receive decent salaries and bonuses and benefits. All of us, we know that nurses and doctors deserve a lot of love, encouragement, and motivation from leaders, not those who say, when you protest, we will arrest you, when you, we protest, we will fire you, that's not the way it has to be done. And this will also apply to what I said earlier. Um, you will see it also on the manifesto where we are talking about all the civil servants, all the, those in the private sector, the journalists, and we also saying the PPPZ family, the new government will immediately reinstate old age pension or put back the old age pension in its former position. And uh, this, um, this reinstatement of the old age pension will touch lives of millions because there are so many orphans who are not receiving grants from the government and uh, the military, or I can say from the military government, because the government is failing our people. And in those farms which we are failing to, we are going to, to, to have greenhouses which are going to produce a lot for export. And in those greenhouses, we are going to create so many jobs. And uh, I will share a lot to you, uh, which you will be able to find also on the on the on the manifesto, and uh, this will also apply to what we are going to do to the to the headmen, uh, those who, who are in the rural areas uh, of Zimbabwe. All the headmen will be entitled to a decent, uh, decent or to a very reasonable government salary, free training, uniform, special ID, uh, for free medication from, it, from uh, any government hospital. All headmen, I think most of us are headmen, Masabu, um, will be uh, allocated free government transport, which is a motorcycle and a bicycle uh, to enable them to conduct their business affairs uh, effectively while they work very closely with the traditional chiefs and uh, with uh, the clinics with the police, with the hospitals, to enable them to conduct their business affairs effectively.
clinics and healthcare facilities in all rural areas. It will be the responsibility of traditional chiefs and their headmen to determine how many clinics and uh, healthcare facilities are required in rural areas under their jurisdiction. The PPPZ's new government will ensure that uh, there is always an ambulance and a police motor vehicle on standby at the residence of the traditional chiefs to cater for special cases or, or, or for emergency cases. Rural bowls, water tanks and uh, greenhouses are to be provided or given by government to all citizens who are 60 years of age and above who will be entitled to a government bowl, water tank and greenhouses. They will be trained how to use those greenhouses. And the government will offer free water culture uh, production uh, training for mushroom, flowers, tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, uh, beans, etc. Free water, free electricity, free medication treatment, uh, free, medication treat, uh, free medical treatment and old age grant. All citizens who are, who are 60 years old and above will be entitled to free electricity, f uh, free water and medication from any government uh, and medication from any government hospital. All citizens who are 60 years and above will be entitled to free ambulance when ill but terms and conditions apply. We also put everything on our manifesto which we will share with you. Uh, duty free on, on imports and free uh, what culture production uh, training to all citizens who are over 57 years of age uh, and above will be entitled to duty free on all their imports as long as what they are importing is not exceeding the value of 50,000 rand. By our fruits, you will soon know us. We are the PPPZ family. Zimbabweans are tired of being betrayed, persecuted, living in poverty, living a life of scavenging, seeking and um, searching for useful things amongst rubbish, which, with no pro medical treat, uh, facilities and having no prospects for future uh, for uh, for the future. Whilst government officials steal and plunder the country's resources with impunity. Orphans, all orphans under the age of 20 years will be entitled to a monthly government grant. All orphans will be entitled to free education from the PPPZ government, university scholarship or scholarship for the, uh, from the PPPZ government. Guarantees, government guarantees for civil servants when purchasing house, motor vehicles, and, further, and for further education. Teachers, nurses, doctors, police, the uh, entire military personnel and all civil servants who have served for more than two years will be entitled to the PPPZ government's guarantees when purchasing a house, or purchasing motor vehicles depending on their employment grades. As per sample, these motor vehicles, we put them here, and you also find this on, uh, on our manifesto, which we are going to share with you. Government medical aid, teachers, nurses, doctors, police, and the entire military personnel, and all civil servants who have served for more than six six months will be entitled to the PPPZ government's medical aid. Government grants for unemployed widows. A big number have got children, but they don't have an income. So we are saying the PPPZ government will, will have grants for all unemployed wid widows they will be entitled to a monthly grant and a grant for each child. Government will offer trainings for them 
for agriculture, which means they will be given facilities which they will maintain themselves for them to be, to be productive. They will be trained to grow mushroom, flowers, tomatoes, cucumbers, and a lot of other products which they can produce for marketing. The old age pension, which I said earlier, the PPPZ government will reinstate the old age pension, and meaning that all citizens who are 58 years of age and above will be entitled to government old age pension or grant or put back the old, the old age pension in its position. And this reinstatement will change, will, will, uh, will touch millions of lives. Currently, there are millions of orphans who are not receiving grants, and they will also benefit from the old age pension that will be given to those who are their grandfathers and grandmothers. The presidential amnesty for 55 years, uh, for those who are 55 years of age and above, Owing municipalities, there are a lot of people who are owing municipalities and because of the fact that they are not employed and they are not able to pay what they are owing. So the PPPZ government will, uh, or the president, there will be a presidential amnesty for those who are 55 years and above. Uh, in here we are saying the PPPZ government will grant an amnesty to all uh, citizens who are 55 years and above who are owing municipalities, meaning that they will not be paying any more what they are owing. The PPPZ government will ensure that Zimbabweans who have nowhere to stay, they are documented so that no one will be saying, I have nowhere to stay. We will make every effort to make sure that they are accommodated. We are all aware that Zimbabweans are in desperate need of a loving and caring president who will be a father of their nation. African presidents and prime ministers must see their appointments in high offices of their land as an assignment from God and not for self-enrichment. So these are some of the issues we would like to deal with if we are elected into power. And we have something very exciting to my sisters, my young sisters and my young brothers, which is free government housing for newly wedded couples. The PPPZ government will offer free government housing to newly wedded couples for two years meaning that the couples, the couples will only pay for water and electricity and electricity and municipal services. But terms and conditions apply. That we will deal with, uh, but you have it in your manifesto, we'll give it to you as well. We come into women now. The PPPZ uh, government is committed to ensuring that women in Zimbabwe are empowered, treated with equal consideration and respect and protected by law, custom and practice. Free registration for maternity, those who are expecting, uh, I'm told they are uh, charged money when they are going to hospital to register for maternity and uh, some they are not employed and where do you expect them to pay, uh, I mean to get the money to pay? When, they are, when the economy is very bad, as you, everyone is aware that uh, the economy is very bad. So we are saying, when they go for registration, they must, uh, as soon as PPPZ government is in power, or is voted into power, our government will, will reach out to ensure that all newly born babies are entitled to free birth certificates, free medical treatment and free nappies because there are a lot of mothers who are not employed and some the fathers have run away and now some they leave the wife when the wife is expecting and then the wife has no income so it is the duty of government to look into cases like that all rural schools to benefit from government 
all children in rural schools will be entitled to, a free, to free education, to one plate of porridge every morning during break time, meaning that there will be free, there will be no fees, but the parents will be responsible for buying the school uniforms for their children. This, this, uh, Zimbabweans are in desperate need of a selfless, loving, caring president who will always want to see the best for his people or nothing. Free sanitary pads for schools. All school, all school girls from 12 years and above will be entitled to free sanitary pads, meaning that the government will meet the costs of the sanitary pads for all schools throughout the country. Health care facilities for urban and rural schools. The PPPZ government will ensure that every school is entitled with, uh, I mean, is allocated with a professional nurse and also a dispensary or clinic. The PPPZ government will ensure that every school has clean water supply because kids at times they go and drink from the rivers which are nearby and uh, they get sick and they are also using lavatories or pit toilets. So all these things we, we intend to change them, even the, the roads to the schools. I have been to a certain school which I visited when I was uh, uh, here in October and I grew up in that area I found out that the bridge which we were using to get to get to that school has been taken away and has never been replaced and ki the kids at times they don't cross to the school when the, the rivers are in flood because there is no bridge so we're gonna put new bridges we're gonna give these issues priority Wow, there's another issue which is very exciting here, which is the, which says the PPPZ government uh, to remove sanctions put 40 years ago in Matabereland province by the ZANU PF. Since 1980, sanctions were imposed on the people of Matabereland by the ZANU PF ruling party. The PPPZ government strongly believes that Zimbabwe belongs. Uh, that Zimbabwe belongs to Zimbabweans of yesterday, today and tomorrow. We keep this country in trust for future generations. I feel what everyone feels. My mother is from Matabaraland, but my father is from here. But we are same people. So I don't see why we should, uh, you know, discriminate. We are one people. If, for example, now, from the president to the juniorist minister, they are put in a queue and all of us will be saying we are Mayang. So we believe in unity as PPPZ and we believe that uh, we are one people. We are people from one mother and we believe that there is no way we can discriminate each other. And in the same uh, uh, provinces uh, like Midlands and uh, Matabaraland, we are seeing greenhouse commercial farming is suitable for millions of uh, of uh, our employed youth uh, of Matabaraland and Midlands provinces. Uh, knowledge is power. Um, commercial farmers are the engine of Zimbabwe's economy. I'm going back to the issue of commercial farmers. If we had commercial farmers doing business like the way they used to do before, then we will have uh, the Cold Storage Commission. I don't know how many people it used to employ at that time when I was uh, in business here, but I can say there were millions of people who were benefiting from the Cold Storage Commission. And uh, we have to get back or turn around Zimbabwe back to its former glory. Together we can make a difference. We are a political party of smart solutions. The People's, the People's Progressive Party is a party that believes that once we are in power, uh, the expectations of all citizens are guaranteed. The people's voice will be the people's choice. Commercial farming is the backbone of, of an African nation. 
of any African nation except those in the desert. My presidency will touch lives because my vision for Zimbabwe is bigger than politics. People's Progressive Party's government will certainly ensure that commercial, uh, commercial farming remains the number one priority. I will unconditionally bring back all the commercial farmers and restore the land issues while we are rebuilding our country. Agriculture will now become Zimbabwe's number one priority. We are to introduce 24-hour shifts in the commercial farmers to make sure that the commercial farms becomes productive. As we speak right now, there are so many farms which were taken from those who were in commercial farms, but those farms are unproductive today. To avoid repetition, I'm leaving certain parts of, uh, because we have said it before. Well, this where I'm saying we will put quality, a quality smile on the faces of the entire civil service. We have already said it, and this includes the police, the army, the the prisons, the the, uh, the immigration, uh, customs department, the air force, and the near the civil service as well. We have already said what we are going to do for them. We will share with you the manifesto uh, to those who want to find time to read it on their own. Um, we are now dealing with the issue of uh, before I proceed to the issue of uh, voting, I want to say freedom and change Zimbabweans believe in as a nation. Uh, PPPZ stands as a voice for the voiceless, as a unifying force, as peacekeepers, and we remain committed to justice and freedom for all people of all communities, meaning black, white, colored, Indian, because we are all Zimbabweans. I have invested my life in this vision so that my fellow Zimbabweans of all communities can see dividends meaning that I am more than ready to introduce standards, standards that are ethical. In essence, I mean ethical leadership. I am determined to do the job that I am hired to do as a servant leader. I will be answerable to the law and the constitution. My policies, to, uh, my policies will put into practice that my policies put, uh, put into practice will put millions of Zimbabweans back to work and turn Zimbabwe around back to its former glory. Voting is the foundation stone for political action. The PP president below, strongly believes that what makes a leader is not necessarily certificates and degrees. Certificates are degree, certificates or degrees makes a worker and can be an advantage, but often a hindrance as, as it makes the leader lose touch with the people. The PPPZ family will empower the women of Zimbabwe and grant them political space. We will empower the women of Zimbabwe so that no children will sleep with an empty stomach. Long overdue is a David because Zimbabwe has a Goriat. And I think all of us, we know what we are talking about, what I'm talking about. PPPZ is, uh, is a David that, will, what, that was well overdue in Zimbabwe. Because Zimbabwe has a Goriat, politically and spiritually. For over four decades, the women of Zimbabwe have been oppressed and, and, uh, oppressed and unrepresented and are still oppressed and are the most suffering, and we need to deal with that. And as People's Progressive Party, we are saying 
The new government of the People's Progressive Party will divest strategies to change the lives of millions of women by empowering them because the victory of the women is a victory for the entire nation and of all progressive forces throughout the world as we are all born of a woman. People's Progressive Party therefore declares uh, 2022 as a year of the victory of the of, uh, victory of the Zimbabwean women and Zimbabwe will never be the same again because millions of of um, women of the uh, sorry yeah, this uh, because millions of uh, women um, of the People's Progressive People's uh, PPP Women's Freedom Charter are ready to learn to lead because they feel that they have new they've now been granted political space which they have, which they had been denied um, or deprived for over four, four decades and we strongly believe that uh, women were created to be loved not to be abused any man who abuses women is ignorant insecure weak and a barbarian real women I mean, real men or leaders protect and empower women. PPP Z understands the importance of women, women's security and empowerment because of that reason. The following will, uh, the following will always remain our number one priority: the challenges of women empowerment and uh, equality. Zimbabwean women are still unrepresented and oppressed, so we have to deal with that. People as Progressive Party, as a, as a government, will, will, divest, will devise strategies to change the lives uh, of women and women, in, uh, women by empowering them because, women, because victory of the women is the victory of, uh, for the entire nation and of the all progressive forces as i've said it before mothers make the world go round we cannot make we cannot make it alone without them there will be no home uh, no home sweet home 